All right. Um, yeah. So uh, welcome. Uh, so the title of this video, obviously, um, I haven't like written the title yet um, because I'm recording the video right now. So I'll, I'll you know, obviously the title will be what it is, and it'll be something like you know. Uh, today I just want to go over like Aether Raid's offense because I, I I've gone over my defense stuff a lot. Um, we might actually on Tuesday or Monday, I might upload the um, defense report. Uh, for how my defense went, because there are some interesting things in there and some some things that don't uh, normally happen. Um, what's the word? More like atypical things. Um, like I said, sometimes I don't like. I don't want to. You know, I didn't want to post it every week because again, every week, oftentimes you end up just fighting against you know bikes and leafs and bikes and leafs. Right? It's it's that week after week. Um, but there was actually some pretty interesting ones this week um, that I want to take a look at and see maybe how we can deal with later. And I have made a few changes that um i think I'll, I'll keep going forward so yeah uh but for today um i want to talk about some aether aids offense stuff so basically the video will probably be called something like um i don't know like competitive investments um both current and and future nothing so complicated but that's kind of what the video is going to be about like what i want to talk about basically it's kind of like showing off certain units um certain things that you know on, like on the defense i showed off i, I show off uh, certain units that i have that i've already you know merged up um and you know i i've shown some of my offense stuff uh but not to the biggest degree and now that like a lot of this stuff is is built to the way i want it uh, i think it's a good time to start showing off some builds and then i also want to talk about what some future builds are and and some plans going forward uh with regards to that uh so let's take a look here i'll, I'll be let's go to here uh edit well let's go over here having a decently successful uh season i've been missing a few um so uh for those of you who, who do watch all the uh the aether aids offense videos uh you know that i basically have one team on on offense i don't know what this is it's the same thing but i really only have one team on um on offense for the, for uh, Astra season. Now, obviously, my light season is a little different. I have a myriad of teams, um, but for now, let's focus on um, Astra, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of those as well. Um, so this is basically my Astra team. Like I said, we're getting to a point where it's getting kind of difficult to be more um, team creative. You know what I mean? Like it's getting to a point where there's a certain restriction to your team creation it makes sort of individual units stand out a little bit more but team you know you know when you go into an aether raids map a lot of times we're losing this idea this ability to like oh i beat your team with my team it's more like well three of my units are dedicated to astro mythic units um one of them was the bonus unit and now i just have one left over right we're, we're kind of pushing towards that but um in my Astro season, I actually enjoy. I'm starting to enjoy this season a lot more just because of how well it's put together. Uh, just this one team, uh, it is going to. Uh, it's going to suck a little bit once uh, I do have to. Once I do need to start putting in a third mythic. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, know, uh, you the, the three the third mythic doesn't actually get you more points. Um, it all it does is get you more. Um, what's it called? More stats. So past these two mythics here, you don't get any more points um, in regards to like how many, how much you score. But the the, the reason we're it's sort of kind of pushing in that direction is because the stats are very important. Um, you're gonna be fighting against a lot of people, a lot of very difficult teams, and stats at that high level become like even one even a, a one stat allocation is is you know can make or break an, uh, an offense. And we're talking about you know a third mythic that's actually that's a four point difference. Uh, or three point if you have a second Altino, or whatever else you have, right? Um, but yeah, so for now, um, I can stay pretty competitive. I think, like I said, I'm having trouble getting into Astra, uh, getting into tier 27 here in Astra season. But uh, as we saw last time, I got my red share, um, and I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty up there in terms of um, what I can do competitively this season. Again, it's just sort of lacking uh merges on a lot of the on a lot of these things for scoring my scoring is a little lower than, than um, a lot of people's and that's i mean to, to some degree some people disregard that as like 
like like I don't mean to disregard it, right? It's not like oh, you know, I'm I'm as good as anybody. I just don't have the merges. I I think personally, one of the things about this game is you need to realize that your merges are investments. So just just sort of disregarding the oh I'm I'm just as good as they are, but you know I don't have the merges. Well, in that sense, then you're not as good as they are because you didn't plan accordingly as as they did. Um, you know, other people we're talking about other people in in tier twenty seven and all that stuff. So um, investments and and being smart with your orbs is a big part of this game. So the fact that I have not been uh, allocating orbs accordingly to uh, proper merges in here here and there um, is an indication of my skill. So I can't really, I, I'm pretty good, I think, right? But I'm, I cannot say that like, oh, I'm one of the best. I just, oh, I don't have the merges. I mean, that's how, that's that, those two things go hand in hand. It's hard to, you know, pretend like you're 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 anything more than you are when when you're missing such a vital aspect. Um, but yeah, that being said, um, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where I am. Um, yeah, and, and this team is actually like I'm starting to enjoy playing with this team a lot more. Almost, I mean, almost like before. I guess it's it's a contrast. Not so much. I'm not so much thinking. Oh, I'm liking my Astro season more than my uh, Light season. I'm actually kind of liking them both about equally. But I actually am looking forward to Astro season now, where uh, before. My Astra season was just a, a huge pain. I, I hated, you know, every other week playing this game because, you know, I knew Astra season was coming up. Um, but yeah, now I'm actually enjoying Astra season. Uh, it's pretty fun, pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so let, let's kind of get into some. Let's get into some some teams. We'll start with uh, Astra first. We'll get it out of the way because it's only one team, like I mentioned. Um, so this is my Altina. Um, for any of you, I think uh, I didn't actually see the video just because I. I don't really care too much for like a lot of summoning stuff, but um, I think C Pokemon Twelve got his uh, plus ten Altina. I know he was trying for that, uh, so hopefully he got that. Uh, as you can see, mine is not plus ten. Um, just gave her a few flowers here and there, you know, moved her around. Um, so let's ha let's talk about what I left on her. The Twin Blades is obviously excessively good. Um, it's very powerful against like bikes, though bikes aren't really that. Uh, they're not that big a deal, but it's it's just nice to have, right? Just like, oh, here, here's the thing. Um, uh, fort, I was fortunate enough to get an attack boon, Altina, which is basically what you want. Um, she hits twice, so you want to get as much attack out of those two hits that you can. Uh, you want to just kill everybody on the one engagement. Um, reposition is here. It's just useful for movement and such. I forgot who I have her you know, with Lucina. Very interesting. Uh, Vantage, of course, I think she comes with Vantage. Um, it's just easy, right? So you either hit them, you either engage and hit them twice, or they engage on you and you hit them twice first, and then hopefully you 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 take them out with those two hits. Altina at a plus ten can be very scary, but like I said, I don't have you know mine isn't plus ten, so we're kind of making do with what we what we have here. Uh, Asher has chosen um, this. Obviously, you, you kind of stick with that. That's fine. Um, this actually is, is very good. Like, yeah, it's just it's pretty crazy. Uh, so I went with the attack defense oath on her because she's not going to... I don't use her as a main um, CC vantage unit or something like that. Or, or DC vantage unit. Um, so she doesn't really need the defense smoke. She has the defense smoke, but a lot of times you just kind of use her to pick someone off that you in particular need to like hit hard with, with her. So I just was like, well, I'll just put this back on her. Because defense smoke is helpful for engagements after the engagement you just had. And, and obviously, you know, I don't I don't use Altina all that much to like take on as many engage a bunch of engagements. Uh, so so I just put this back on her. That'd be more useful. Now why is the deflect magic here? The deflect magic here is because not only in addition to being red, uh, but also having a pretty meaty res stat. As you can see here, a thirty eight res stat. Uh, she has still lost to simply plus one thrasiers, um, and that's not something I really like. Uh, I don't think anybody likes, right? So it, yeah. So that's that's why the deflect magic is here. Is like, I don't want to run into Thrasiers and have to sit there and calculate. Well, I survived this because for one, she should never be. She, like I said, she's a red, she's a red, you know, basic res tank, right? Almost forty res, and if she can't tank a Thrasier, then you know, like what, what is she doing here exactly? Um, so I put on the deflect magic because I was tired of losing to like you know, like I said, just random. One plus one Thrasiers for no real reason whatsoever. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't had to tank too many Thrasiers with her. 
uh, ever since I made this change, but there's not a whole lot else I can like put on her. I mean, you can put on um, like a brazen or a uh, what's the other one, or like a fierce stance or something like that, and you'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so this is Maltina. She's she's obviously just kind of here as a, as the mythic. Um, she's all, she's she's very useful if you need you know a secondary unit to start you know, helping wipe stuff out. Uh, so you know, and just in general, I mean, I, I really love Maltina's art. I love her design. I love the the fact that she's holding the two uh, the two swords. Um, yeah, I'm happy that, uh, you know, we got a very nice uh, Astra Mythic. Wait a minute. Has anybody else noticed that? Her and her, we don't have another Astra. But, like, come over here. Like, her and her. And then there's the there's Mila, which I don't have because I don't really care. Um, and then there's Mila. All the all the offensive mythic units are are females, right? Is there a, is there a male yet? I, I have. Wow, that's crazy. My mind is is uh, shattered. So I guess me and uh, IS are pretty synchronous when it comes to uh, our preferences. You can say. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of yeah. That's kind of that's an interesting realization. There's no light. There's three lights, and they're all female. And there's two Astros, and they're both female. That's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who've seen my, uh, you know, offense videos already, you, you've already seen my um, Felicia. Uh, one of my one of my favorite investments, one of my proudest investments, is sticking with her uh, this far. Um, yeah, I just I, I really enjoy using her a lot. Um, the broadleaf fan is obviously excessively powerful. Um, so let's kind of talk about what what goes where why i put it that way because again like for those of you who know me you know i'm an avid uh viewer of accuracy stuff and and i tried to like learn from him and from his like m mistakes in a lot of cases um and one of the things that i perceive to be a mistake that he does a lot is he doesn't really kind of walk through a lot of things he just kind of gives an overview he's like oh yeah this stuff is obvious and he kind of moves on and and i know you know it, it kind of does make sense right it's like oh yeah a lot of stuff is obvious there's no real reason to like go into a lot of it but like uh, like I said, I've said this a few times before, but I mean, um, my one of my favorite professors I've ever had, you know, told us something that really stuck with me, and it was that there's no such thing as obvious, or or no, uh, there's no such thing as common sense, right? Um, so you know, I I would like to to rectify what what certain things that I don't agree with with Acherus, because Acherus kind of talks to himself basically. Um, he talks to himself, and then you can gleam from him what you want. Uh, he's not really here to teach very much, which is kind of interesting because uh, apparently he is a teacher. So I'd, I'd hope I'd never. I hope those kids are okay. <laughs> I hope the people he's teaching are okay. Not that you know, I'm sure he's a great teacher, right? I just, I just, um, I've met professors and teachers like him before who uh, prioritize their own convenience over um, di making information digestible and, and and sort of walking through stuff. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, Fire Emblem is a game that, you know, he's probably talking to adults, people who are, who know what they're doing, uh, to some degree. And he really only talks to his own community, right? Like if you look at his videos, no one, he doesn't have any discussion with anybody. So he just kind of, um, you know, blurts out the information and then just kind of pisses off. Um, but yeah, I would like to sort of, sorry, I'm kind of like, uh, going into a critique of Acherus, uh, not my intention unfortunately but uh, anyway let's get back to uh, what we're talking about here so I do kind of want to break down everything um, some things are obvious but we'll point them out anyway um, so obviously the broadleaf fan uh, one of the most powerful daggers we've ever seen probably the most powerful dagger we've ever seen uh, so much so in fact that it's preferable and basically almost any dagger unit um, over their own dagger in, in most cases uh, with some exceptions being um, probably uh, Layla, um, maybe some cleaners here and there are pretty good. Uh, some barb shurikens, but those are kind of uh, those are kind of niche, and you have to really know what you're doing with those. Um, but anyway, so the broadleaf fan, for those of you who don't know, uh, it takes as you can read here grants bonus to units attack equal to total penalties on foe during combat. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot more to say to, compared to that. It's just the debuffs they have on them, your, your attack gets boosted, which is different than uh, Micaiah's thing, which does true damage based on debuffs they have on. Um, so what that means is, since she has 
basically what makes it so um, strong is the fact that it's on a dagger, which the dagger itself reduces their defense and res by 7 after an attack. Not only the unit, but also the units around it. So on, fa on, on consecutive engagements, uh, she has a plus 14 to her attack stat. Which, as you see here, attack 47 plus the 14 is 54, right? 64. So you just have a Felicia running around with 64, um, a 64 attack stat, right? Um, now I don't know about a lot of you, but that that's pretty scary to to run up to. Is you know if you see someone a unit that has six that much attack that can oftentimes double you. But not only that, uh, you have to also take into consideration the fact that they are debuffed by seven on the defense stat on the defense or res stat, which again, also mean, which basically kind of swings seven more in your favor, right? So not only do you have a 64 attack stat, you basically have a 71 attack stat uh, to hit to someone's HP pool. Um, and these stacks, these, these these debuffs can get pretty insane. As you can see, that's a 64 attack stat, again, like I said, almost 70, basically, um, basically 71. Yeah, basically 71 attack stat. Um, off her alone, off of just an engagement she has alone, everyone after that, she basically has 71 attack to fight against them. Um, but that's, you know, what's great about her is that she doesn't only work in unison. Uh, we'll get to her, her counterpart in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah. As you can imagine, the more debuffs you stack on people, uh, the more damage you're gonna do, and really the more oppressive, uh, Felicia can get. Um, let's see... Noontime is here to help her uh, survive because obviously she's going to be dealing such a colossal amount of damage that uh, you can uh, leech some off of that. And you never, I'm not going to say never, I'm sure uh, sometimes it happens where your Noontime heals you so much that you go over the vantage threshold. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but of course it's always something you, you need to consider. Uh, the, plus five, the plus five extra flowers we got was also very nice. Uh, I could finally get her to a plus, uh, to a 47 attack stat, which with... Uh, paired with Altina gets her up to 50, like a, a flat 50, uh, and there's no real like um, advantages to the to get into the 50, but it was just irritating me uh, that it was stuck at the 49 for the longest time. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> uh, now we have around 50, so that's a pretty good number to to, to hang off on. Um, I went with the defense refine because let's think about this, right? She doesn't need a whole lot more res. She's got 44 res, which is pretty good. Um, speed, we'll get to speed. And speed, if, if I didn't go for the defense refine, I would go for speed. Um, yeah, so 48 speed is no is no joke. Uh, the attack refine only gets you one extra attack point, which really isn't worth the, the three you're getting from the defense. Like, especially because, again, like we're talking, the Broadleaf fan is going to give you so much attack anyway. <laughs> wait, wait. Hold on. Ah. Oh, sorry about that. Ah, wait, wait. Uh, but yeah, the Broadleaf fan is getting you so much attack anyway that, like, you know, debating over a one-point difference is kind of uh, a moot point, really. Um, so all that's left is uh, speed and defense, really. Uh, I went with defense because, as you can see there, uh, if you drop that minus three defense we just got from the Broadleaf fan, I think it's three or is it four. Yeah, that minus three. She's down to 27 defense, and that's pretty pitiful. Like, you... When you're when you're considering your 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 CC vantage um, dagger unit or whatever whatever unit you want, uh, you really need to consider that. In a lot of case, like for the most part, if you're running this unit, this type of unit, this type of strategy, you want to just retaliate back and one shot them, right? This is why not a lot of people broadly fan on her. They put them on on much better units. Maybe like someone like uh, Kagero is pretty good for that, or just a, another dagger unit with a higher attack stat. Um, just to sort of overkill because when it comes to a cc vantage uh you know sweeper there's no such thing as overkill there's only kill right you need to make sure first and foremost before any other any other things are considered that she can one shot on the retaliation um as good as well as possible which is what makes Kranya such an excellent uh vantage sweeper um because her dagger already has the vantage and you can just charge the glimmer and she doesn't have to worry about how tanky she is Despite actually being quite tanky, um, I do like her stat spread. But anyway, uh, you can just focus more on the one-shot counter. Um, that being said, I while I do value the one-shot counter in, in most cases, I do unfortunately still 
uh, value the ability to take hits every so often, which is why you see the uh, brazen attack defense down here. So she basically is an effective um, 30, 30 defense plus the 5 you get from, uh, what's her name, from Naga. Gets you up to 35 plus the uh, 7 you get from the uh, brazen is a 42. So 42 and 44 is what you got, um, which is pretty good. I, I think... I think that's a good uh, stat spread for someone this tanky, which is why, personally, I've, I've always really liked Felicia. Not not always, right? So the first half of my like for Felicia came from just her her, her Felicia's plate. It's a very it was a very strong uh, plate, very very powerful. Adaptive damage is no joke, and it carried her as best it could have when I was using her before I got the Broadleaf fan. Um, she was still very lackluster because, for one, you know, it, it's it's often said that you know I think we all we all know. Felicia's plate is probably one of the best um, weapons out there, uh, but for the wrong unit. Uh, unfortunately, Felicia doesn't have the attack stat to really pull it off or make it threatening, right? Like, it doesn't really matter if... And th there's also another thing to consider in this situation that I came to realize, that you come to realize really quickly, is that Felicia came out, she's a Gen 1 unit, or around Gen 1. You know, she came out, like, at the very beginning of the game. And back then, people were a little more min-maxed, right? So if you were a, a, a res tank, you had more res than you have defense. If you were a defense tank, you have more defense than you have res, right? A lot of units were very sort of separated into what they wanted to do. Some were pretty good at both, but they were middling at both, right? So back then, you know, 30 defense, I'm not going to say it was amazing, but, you know, 30 defense is 30 defense, right? Um, and you probably had something like, you know, 10, 15 res, and then you could snipe that with Felicia. Nowadays, you know, there are people who are running around with 30 defense and res, right? And Felicia's attack stat has not evolved to fight that very well. Um, so people, and, and that's just as a bottom line. I mean, there's people out there who have 45, you know, in one stat and 30 in the other stat. Uh, so are you really getting any benefit out of hitting the weaker stat if the weaker stat is still so much higher than what Felicia can get over? Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why, obviously, Felicia's plate falls off. Um, it's just that Felicia herself is not very uh, attuned to using it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was at the at the beginning. That was sort of why I liked her, like the Fe Felicia's plate. Uh, as I started moving forward, and you know, I had already invested in Felicia like about halfway by that point. Um, I came to start to think about like you know, obviously, a lot of people as soon as Broadleaf fan came out, uh, see Pokemon was on that. And I'm, sure, and I'm sure other people were also like, oh, Broadleaf Fan is, is making dagger units very strong. Um, and to a large degree, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, you know, obviously, I think we all, we all knew that. It's, it's kind of obvious, uh, even though, like I, like I say, um, despite, uh, despite what I say um, about things being obvious or not. But so Broadleaf Fan came out and, you know, it made a lot of dagger units a lot stronger um and you know you can always people you know, you know you're kind of scrambling on who, who it's best on who you should use it on um but I, I really came to the realization personally that i think it's best on felicia because broadleaf fan is so gives you so much attack power that you're basically no longer lacking for attack power like i said a 71 attack stat is you it's, it's sort of overkill in a lot of cases even again going back to what i said there's not there's really no such thing as overkill when you're considering your, your CC Vantage Sweeper. Um, but having such high attack stat basically means that you can now start considering what are, what are some other stats I can allocate those to, right? If I were to basically just like, you know, go into like a unit builder and make my own unit start and they gave me like, you know, here's here's 170 BST. I don't know how much uh, Felicia is, but here's 170 BST. Allocate the stats where you want. I start to think to myself, right, well... Since we basically have attack covered, no matter how uh, how much attack they uh, the unit does or does not have, uh, I can start thinking about well, let's try to make them a little more survivable. And out of all the ones I found, there's no one who really matches Felicia's ability to tank as much as Felicia herself. Um, being able to hit 42, uh, 42 re uh, defense and forty four res uh, is nothing to sneeze at. There's not a lot of people that can hit this at a plus ten. Um, so yeah. That's at a plus ten, uh, plus fifteen with the uh, with with uh, summoner support, of course. Um, and there's not a lot of people who can reach these stats. And you know, I could I could probably go. We could probably maybe one day we can go through the the fire emblem builder and then just start kind of like messing around with units and see who can reach this kind of like quote unquote bulk. As you can see, though, it's it's still kind of a little bit iffy. Um, 
But yeah, like there's no one who could reach uh, like these stats so readily uh, as Felicia could. And yeah, so I just kind of came to that realization that like, wow, actually Felicia's probably one of the better users of Broadleaf Fan because like I said, our Broadleaf Fan takes care of your attack stats to such a degree you can start thinking about what other stats do I want. Um, in Astra Season, uh, Thrasyrs are here, right? Thrasyrs are res is, is a res target. She's something that you can help counter with uh, with Felicia because she has a high res stat. Uh, and then you just and then it's up to you that to, it's up to you to patch up her defense stat, which is really good because for one, the Broadleaf fan again, uh, we can get defense out of it. Plus, that's not to consider the fact that um, Naga gives you defense on Astra, which is why I pushed her here. Um, and in addition to that, one other one other final thing before I, I get too rambly here, um, and we'll kind of close up and move on to another unit. Uh, one other thing is, uh, of course, you have to consider the seasons themselves. Because we have Naga giving people plus five defense, you have to, you know, you as a as a defense builder have to consider that people might be a lot more uh, defensively tanky on Astra Season because they have someone just feeding them five defense, right? So that, be that being in mind, I, ha I do end up seeing a lot more people on defense uh, running more uh, heavy magic threats on Astra than I do notice on, uh, on Light Season, which is good because, like I said, Felicia is perfect for this role. She has 44 res. That's a pretty decent res stat. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of something that I, I wanted to point out is, is there's a whole lot of factors that I, I think really elevated Felicia to be, um, exceptional during the Astra season. Um, at least as exceptional as she could be, right? Uh, she still has problems, of course, um, but kill potential is not something I'm lacking for anymore. Um, it's just sometimes, you know, she gets hit a little too hard by, by certain people or, or certain things happen um, and and you know basically you know the the videos I show you guys where things don't go according to plan or, or you know how, how things go right uh, so not everything always goes according to plan but considering all the things I've, I've mentioned uh, I really do think that Felicia is probably you know one of the better choices for you know for this for this season uh, out of the choices that I'm willing to go with right <laughs> um, that's that's I guess that's the that's the caveat there. I'm not saying these are that she's the absolute best choice. There's probably a better choice out there, um, but she's the best choice given my preferences and what I want out of a unit, uh, which is basically, of course, I mean, um, you know, pink hair, uh, lovely boots, um, and a very and a maid, you know, in general. So yeah, like I said, uh, you know, always take everything when I'm talking about certain investments that look kind of sketch. Uh, you know, it's always important to remember that I do make investments. Uh, poor investments uh, on purpose. Well, not on, not necessarily on purpose, but knowing they are not the best investments. So you know, take these things going forward uh, for yourself. Um, you know, what I'm what I'm basically showing off here is sort of, I guess, in a lot of cases, are almost worst case scenarios, right? Like, imagine the worst. You know, like not the you know again not the worst case scenario. I made the best of what I what I'm looking for, both competitive, what I want out of competitive, and what I want out of you know, just aesthetics in this game. Um, Felicia was a perfect marriage between the two, um, but yeah. So you know, it, it, this is this is a, this is why I point this out because for one, it, it shows you uh, that you can be successful even sacrificing a little bit of competitiveness for your you know what you your favorites. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, but on top of that, it also means that look, if I'm doing pretty well with Felicia and she's a uh, you know pretty you know middling choice, I mean you should be doing a lot better if you do if you choose uh, a far better. A far better unit in most cases so kind of you know that those are the two reasons the two main reasons I, I like to talk about these things um is to you know just let people know what's up uh but yeah so i think uh she you know she's perfect for for um for astro season uh what are the two things that she's missing obviously you can see their attack and defense uh naga gives her five defense and um, Ultina gives her three attacks, so she's at fifty, and which is pretty decent. With uh, and then you combine with Prod with Broadleaf in. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 that. Oh, and I guess the last thing is uh, Pulse Smoke. This <laughs> for for any of you who've seen uh, some of my videos, this actually got me killed one time. It, well, okay, the Pulse Smoke didn't get me killed. My inability to properly use the Pulse Smoke uh, got me killed one time. <laughs> 
Um, uh, the pulse smoke has actually been excessively like, well, I want to say almost oppressively powerful um, for my CC Vantage user. Like it is no joke. Um, yeah, it is no joke how useful the pulse smoke is and has been. Um, I th I'm sure as you all know, uh, Ophelia's are in no short order on defense on either season, really. Uh, but I do tend to, I do feel like I see a lot more of them this season. And I know, and I, and I, and it's quantifiable. It's not just selection bias. It's almost quantifiable. Well, it's still not very quantifiable, but like, I know they're more here because I don't, I don't worry about Ophelia's anymore. If they were if they were on uh, on light season, I'd be a lot more annoyed with them because there's not much I can do with do concerning them. Uh, do uh, not much I can do about them on light season. But because Felicia has pulse smoke, she basically just makes them bait. Um, so yeah, I, I this pulse smoke is probably one of the best investments I have ever made. Um, going after to to get for her, um, and uh, yeah, and I already said that. I guess I said this a while ago, but I, I just I guess this is the closing the closing thing that you've seen all this. I do want to make one last point, uh, and this is in regards to a video, um, a video that Acarus made a while back, talking about the sacred seals and, and what the good uh, some some pretty surprisingly good ones that are out there right now. Which I agree with uh, the sorcery blade. I have not built it myself, but it does you know it it does look pretty good now that you can put it in the C slot. Uh, my problem is it's hard to use on eight on on uh, Aether raids because a lot of times. The adjacentness is what the problem is. If it was like two spaces, then I'd be fine. Uh, but of course, it'd be it'd be almost excessively overpowered there. But the problem is, it's a lot of times when you bait out a unit in Astra, and you have two units adjacent, they'll hit that unit, and then something will happen where they'll dance, and they'll just hit the unit behind that unit, and then you know, you basically you, you know it was done. Um, but you know, if you pick your spots with it, it's 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 impressively powerful. Uh, he says he's in an arena, which I can see that uh, being the case is very good there. Um, and the other thing, uh, speed res solo is actually amazing. Like I, I wish I had more, like when it first came out, I was just like, of all the solos we got, it would be, it, of course it would have been this one. But, uh, now that I'm using it on a lot of units, it's, it's actually pretty good. And we'll go into that in a little bit, um, as well when we're talking about future investments and whatnot. Um, but the, the, the one thing that kind of caught me sort of off guard and, uh, the one thing I don't agree with, and again, I'm, I'm nobody, so it's not like it really matters, but, um. The one thing I, I very heavily disagree with is the the idea of a vantage seal. Um, because I'd like to show you something here. Change skills. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, she has. So she got this from uh, what's her name? She got this. She got this with pulse smoke. Uh, from a green somehow I think wait a minute okay wait now I'm confused how did I get how did I get all these skills off of it oh okay never mind no, yeah okay so I got uh, life and death 4 off of pull smoke with from a green um, and I got special I got close counter special spiral off of New Year's Alphonse together at the same time um, so, as you can see here, as you can imagine, this is about this is basically the dream come true, right? Take off the uh, the brazen and put the vantage in the in the seal, um, and there you go. I think while you know, I mean, obviously, Icarus is a lot better than me at this game. He's a lot. He's a lot. He's probably a lot smarter uh, when it comes to these kind of things too. And and when he says something, he usually, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it it it. it it's taken all the arguments I could have against him, and he's already considered all those arguments, and you know he knows what he's he's saying. You know, at the end of the day. Um, that being said, I really don't think I would like a vantage. Like as much as it's a dream come true, right? I, I would love to just have give me the vantage. I will put on my special spiral and uh, go to town on everybody. I think that's that's the problem, personally, right? It basically as soon as the vantage becomes a C slot passive, every Vantage sweeping unit is gonna be the same. You're gonna see all of them with glimmer noontime. No, not glimmer noontime. Uh, yeah, right. You're gonna see all of them with glimmer, special spiral, close counter, probably broadleaf fan, if not some other kind of dagger, which is equally as powerful, right? I don't know. That 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 to me just screams of like non. Um, 
I don't know. It, it takes away a lot of... What's the word? Build sacrifice, right? If I want Special Spiral, I have to give up the, the, the Vantage. Like, it's... Both of those two... Um, both of those are very strong things to be giving up or, or to be having the trade-off for. It's the main reason I don't have, obviously, the Special Spiral, because you need the Vantage. Um, back. Uh, one of the things that he, he pointed out was like, oh, it's, it's because we need to... You know, he doesn't believe that, um, what's her name? Cronia should be like the, the, the end all for CC Van Vantage units. But I think as you, as you can see, like she, she really isn't, I, I do fairly well without her. I mean, maybe, you know, he's talking about like, oh, in the, in the top 100, only Cronia is viable, but I don't really see that either. I mean, you rarely see anybody who makes videos about the top 100 only using Cronia, like, as if she's like the end all be all of all dagger CC vantage units. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's just sort of my take on that. I, I while I, I guess I wouldn't mind it. I do think it's going to be kind of sad when we do get the see the vantage seal, because uh, then everybody's build is going to be the same. They're all just going to run vantage special spiral glimmer, um, and at that point you haven't solved anything, right? You've just made everybody Cronia, and while it's nice to have that same concept with different skins um it's just very boring i think um and it kind of invalidates a lot of like i don't know maybe it's just because it invalidates a lot of the work i did to try to get felicia to where she is now um with all the stuff on her but yeah i, I do think that um the vantage in the seal is probably i i think it's be more of a of a detriment for creativity than than not um, and it's pretty telling to me that like he didn't have any examples of like how that would make the game better like like whose builds could be more interesting because of it he just said oh yeah finally we can have the CC Vantage thing and everybody can be you know glimmer special spiraling all over the place um, which I don't you know I don't really I'm not the, the biggest fan of that um, and and I think the other question is why not um, let Cronia have that niche right. To a large degree, I mean, Cronia is a free-to-play unit. She's something everybody can invest in if they want. Um, she's just, she's in the Grail shop. Not only that, but she's a Tempest trial or she's a she's a GHB unit, which means that she's just even less Grails than a GHB unit or or a Tempest trials unit. Yeah, she's a GHB, um, and she's not Tempest trial. Yeah, uh, which means it's a lot less. You know, whatever. But yeah, that, that's that's just that's just the way I view it. Um, of course, you know, like I said, I'm nobody. Uh, one of the things, yeah, uh, I mean, I have a Cronia, like pretty. Eh, she's not max invested, but she's close enough. She's a plus eight with uh, the, I don't know, like five flowers or something. Uh, her the, the new max is ten. I just haven't gotten around to giving them to her because, um, for one, I have other investments I actually want to put prioritize over her, and for two, like I said, I already have a dagger unit for CC vantage sweeping. Um, and she doesn't have close counter or, or the special spiral that she needs. Uh, so she's kind of lacking in that regard. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's enough of that. Um, like I said, just be wary of what it would mean, like for, the, for those of you out there, out there, be wary for what it would mean uh, for us to get a, a, a vantage seal. Like think about how that'll affect your builds. Think about what characters you're gonna you're gonna start running with that, with that seal on and you know, ask yourself, is this really better for the game? Uh, and personally, like, as I've started considering builds and thinking about ideas like that, um, I really don't think so. Um, it'll make it'll make player phase a lot easier, like, you know, CC Vantage stuff, uh, Aether Raids offense, and basically anything that you're controlling, it'll make it a lot better. It's not going to help a lot of defense stuff out, because having a, the seal in the, the Vantage seal in the C slot, in the Having the Vantage Seal isn't really going to help very much in on AI-controlled stuff. Uh, but for anything player-controlled, it's just going to give the player controllers, anything player-controlled, more power. Which, it, it's it's good, right? Because we don't have to, we're not expressing that power against each other. I mean, no one's getting annoyed because some guy has, like, some irritating build he copied off of online. Um, the same way you do in other games. But it's still something to consider that uh, pushing, giving players too much power over each other is, is something you want to consider. Um, but yeah, so anyway, sorry about that. Uh, it was a bit tangential. But yeah, um, just wanted to show off the fact that uh, if we do get that Vantage Seal, 
trust me, Felicia is going to uh, be pretty monstrous, I think. Um, yeah, so so that's that. Uh, we'll, we might come back and or maybe just point, point out some stuff from here, but uh, yeah. Uh, she's just here. I mean, I guess I could showcase her, but I pulled her like like year one or something. She's been here since like the beginning for a long time. Um, the one thing that's kind of funny on this season is that I can hit somebody with this, and this is a lot more debuffs for the um, for the Broadleaf fan, so it's an extra plus 12, dam 12 plus to my attack stat, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, not to mention the, also the 7 you get from here. So as you can see... Your buffs, your debuff, your attack stat gets, tends to stack pretty high, right? So, you know, like I said, you don't need to go with so much attack. You can sacrifice attack for other stats, and there's not a whole lot of other daggers that sacrifice their attack for the stats you want, right? Like the another once another person I was considering was like Kagero, but she she's lacking a lot of speed at a plus ten. I mean, she has decent speed, but uh, you can tell she she's not as speedy as as you'd want her to be. Anyway. Uh, now here, uh, one of my favorite units of all time, um, because of how much she does just by herself. Like she is, she's a monster for um, what she what she's capable of just on her own. And not to mention, I mean, just look at her. Like, of course. Um, so she's one of my favorite units of all time. I'm uh, finally happy that I got to plus ten her. Uh, one of my, dare I say, one of my best investments, I think. Uh, just as a raw, like, like no caveats here. Not like, oh, you know, she's best for what my categories. No, I think uh, one of the best investments in the game you can make is going to be getting your, your Tethys to look something like this. Um, even so much so that even uh, Acarus puts her, he, he mentioned in one of his videos, he'd probably put her over a Versa these days. Uh, and I wouldn't disagree. Um, I would not disagree. So let's kind of walk through what, what you might want on your uh, Tethys. Tethys is also, funny, funnily enough, another uh, unit I was considering for the Broadleaf fan, sent kind of uh, CC Vantage Sweeping uh, thing, just because she has pretty good bulk. Uh, well, res stat anyway. Uh, but yeah, so let, let's kind of take a look at what's going on here. Uh, the Tamari, one of the best daggers we've ever gotten for support dagger. Uh, this basically makes her. Um, yeah, so uh, if their res is minus three... Lower than yours, uh, they get minus five attack and speed. For one, making you uh, more tanky because their attack is reduced, making you avoid doubles because their speed is reduced, um, and her rest stat is actually pretty good. Uh, Forty-four is not bad. Um, of course, you kind of like you might always you can always you can always want more. Uh, there's a lot of people who are running around with like forty-five res, but the thing is, those people, it's they're not that big a deal. Like if they have enough res that um they 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 escape the tamari uh debuffs i think you're still pretty solid i mean you know everybody else is gonna get debuffed not like that it's not like you're gonna run into a team where all six of them are 45 res and you're screwed basically right um it's usually just one or two i think at that point you know you're pretty solid uh in terms of who you're debuffing uh, but so yeah so this is not only is it great just you know having these these debuffs on the enemy uh, it's also great because, like we said, uh, Broadleaf Fan is very good for that. Before the match even starts, before you've ever attacked anybody, thanks to Broadleaf Fan and them having those debuffs on them, you're already at a plus 10 attack because of this dagger. And you've got more survivability, so she's at a 60, which is it's pretty it's pretty solid for, for, for that. Um, so yeah, let's go back in here. So, so basically you've got a, a plus 5 or minus 5 to everything, which is good. Uh, it's actually amazing, honestly. Uh, dance. The other th here's the other thing. Not only do you get the Tamari, but you get the dance as well. So she holds two posi two debuffing positions by herself, which is incredible. Um, moving forward, we also have Glacies. So I put Glacies on her just because it's going to give you the maximum damage potential. She's not going to be fighting very often, but if she ever needs to like hit somebody. Um, like hit a few people a few times that they can't counter and maybe just finally just wipe them out with a huge uh huge glacies uh there you go you know it's it's there if she needs it um so that that's that uh pretty simple the hp here is for as you can already see i guess i'm kind of like delaying it the sudden panic um the sudden panic is another thing that she like it's why you can kind of compare her to aversa and why you can kind of say she's better than aversa because for one, she actually hits higher thresholds with this because of Aversa. I forgot what her HP is. Her HP is like 67. So you could hit anybody 
Uh, 67, 66 and lower, where Aversa has to hit people uh, 65 and lower, which, you know, that's one HP difference, but it, when we're considering three triple uh, Mythics, that's actually, it goes a lot higher, right? So you're at 67, you're at 72. So anybody under 71 HP is, is getting hit by the Panic. Um, hopefully that's just my end. The sound doesn't look, sound weird to you guys. Um, but I want to point out that so yeah, I mean, in addition to... Alright, so not only is it good to have the panic on them uh, in general, we're also, again, we have to keep coming back to this because of how overpowered uh, Broadleaf fan. What people... What, what might some people might not realize is the panic is its own separate debuff. So if they have the minus 5 on attack and speed, and then someone gives them a plus 6 attack and speed while they have the panic on them, they're getting the, those minus five plus the minus six attack and speed from that buff that got converted into a debuff. So already, based on that, they're getting minus eleven to attack and speed, and you're getting each, and you're getting twenty-two attack total, which you know you're at seventy-two off of just that, basically. Uh, of course, it kind of falls off because people are, are, are a lot of people are smart enough not to run buffs on um, on on their defense teams. Um, but yeah, it's still excessively useful, still very powerful, still very um, oppressive in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's always important to have it on your units to keep that general because either right, either they get deb either they get the sudden panic hitting them and the the buffs they're putting on become debuffs, or they're not running buffs at all and then you're solid, right? Like, win-win, basically, is what the point is. Um, yeah, so... Sudden Panic uh, with Tamari pairs perfectly, like, unequivocally perfectly with the Broadleaf fan. Uh, and then we get the Infantry Pulse, which is, of course, um, you know, just... It, it's it's something to have on her. Uh, Garrick, I took Sudden Panic off of Garrick, and he came with Infantry Pulse 3, so I just... Fought it off, uh, I think it's Melissa or something, uh, that had Infantry Pulse 1 and 2, and I took both of them. Uh, and I just figured, well, if it's on, if, if she has it on there, may as well put it on her. Uh, it's not actually a whole lot I can put here, or um, that I might want to. I mean, some people run Infantry Rush, which is pretty good too, but uh, I just need that first turn, because my Felicia should not be hanging around my other units very long. She should be in the action, you know, CC Vantage sweeping people. Um, and then lastly, we have the HP Res 2 here. Uh, Acarus suggested something interesting that I thought I kind of agreed with a little bit was running the, the Phantom Res here to make the Tamari easier to uh, get that check off, but uh, my audio is going kind of weird. Hopefully it doesn't sound that bad on your end. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, it's kind of, it's just the sound from the, the audio from the, the thing, so um, I guess it'll be a little quieter, unfortunately, um, this time going forward. Um, but yeah, so let's go back to form rating party here. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, just talking about Tamari and and, and uh, her. Now, like like I, like I was saying, uh, you can kind of run Phantom Speed or Phantom Res down here, and then kind of like um, boost your threshold for which you trigger the Tamari plus dagger. But I really like, especially now because I don't run triple mythic. Um, I really do value the HP a little bit more than being able to catch people with the the um, the Tamari debuffs. So that's why you see the HP res. Um, it, it's really the best of both worlds because I'm not going to sacrifice the two res I get from HP res for the you know the one HP for the HP plus five. Um, and I don't. I'm not going to sacrifice the entire H, the entire four HP points to get more res. Um, personally, uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of what the, my thoughts are there. Uh, why I went with that, like either you debuff most of them or the people who you don't debuff, it's not that big a deal, really. Um, person, uh, I believe anyway. Uh, some people might value the the Tamari debuffs a lot more, but I really, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, like I said, again, keep in mind if you're running triple mythics, then probably yeah, you want to run like Phantom. Uh, phantom res or something like that it might you might even like put on uh like a fortress res or something like that if you want the the visible buffs or the visible uh res stat to increase uh but yeah so that's that's her that's my tethys um a very good investment one of the probably one of the only investments i've ever made in this game that's like 
I was happy 100% to make. There was no withdrawals. There was no, oh, man, I'm going to have to deal with like the fact that she's not as good. I'm going to have to. No, there was no reservations whatsoever. Everything I put into her, I put it in without sweating a, a single uh, a single droplet, um, metaphysically speaking anyway, I guess. Um, but yeah, so for those of you out there who you know try to learn from my content, the, the takeaway here is that you'll never go wrong with a uh, Tethys as your you know as a as a support unit she's just she just does so much uh as one support unit which is why on my astra season it's going to be really hard to, to to like think about what i'm going to do when it comes to like having to run the triple mythic um but i think i can i think like i said the triple mythic is there because you oftentimes at high levels you're going to need the stats uh but because of you know the, how my team is set up i think i can i think i'll be able to like you know go like i don't like i don't lose I don't lose. I don't. I don't lose up out in tier twenty seven, not because my units like stats are making the cut or something like that. I lose out on tier twenty seven because of other things, right? So like like I said, merges, um, for for scoring as well as like certain things where um, one thing it happened to me today actually. Uh, Felicia ends up being a little too strong and she ends up wiping whole teams before I get a chance to hit the, the pots. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, so there's, there's other things I end up losing on that aren't, that don't have anything to do with, oh, I, I'm, I'm losing, I'm, I'm missing these five stats, right? So that's kind of something to consider. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, so these are my, uh, you know, my Aether Raid, this is my Aether Raids uh, offense on Astro Season. Uh, we'll see this in action on Monday, uh, as it is, in fact, uh, Astro Season currently. Uh, so let's talk about... Um, the light season investments really quickly here. So, like I said, I, I, I've showed off. I think I think I've showed off uh, Boki a few times. Uh, she obviously does not have the um, summoner support currently because it's not the season she's useful in. So I leave it off. Um, Boki has been uh, very good, um, surprisingly good, I would say. Uh, a lot of people, obviously, uh, you know, Jom K has always been tossed around as probably one of the better bow users. But I'm happy that. She can compete with Jom K despite being so bad <laughs> in a lot of cases. Um, one of the cool things, and as you can see here, I already uh, got her to the plus 10 thanks to the new flower update, which is pretty cool. Um, her and Felicia are the only two that I've actually uh, over limited on that uh, from the new changes. I'm, out, I'm actually out of red flowers and blue flowers, which is the only units I, I boost. Oh no, the only other one I changed was also um, Winter Cecilia, and we'll get to her in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, my um, my blue flowers here. Uh, I'm out of blue flowers. and I'm out of uh, red flowers. So hopefully, like Acarus mentioned, it'd be nice to get more flower uh, sources in the game. Hopefully, in in better ways. Like we got. What I mean by that is like like we got resonant battles for more like papers and and other things. I think I think we got flowers in there too. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, so we got aether. We got um, resonant battles and stuff like that. I really, I really dislike that mode. I, I, basically, I, and it's funny though, because I guess basically I, I dislike everything in the Colosseum. So you know, I guess that comes from a person who only comes, who only likes playing, um, only likes playing uh, Aether raids, I guess. Okay, I guess that sounds better now. Um, but yeah, so hopefully it's not like they don't add something even more irritating than the thing before. Um, not sure really who enjoys playing uh what's it called um resident battles but <laughs> yeah hopefully we don't get more stuff like that because i really just i'm tired of playing stuff i don't really want to play um but yeah so she actually is turning out to be very very good and on top of that that's not even to mention the idea that um in i think in what are we we're in august in september yeah so i guess next month in a few days i don't know when next month but sometime next month uh, theoretically, we should be getting those IV mangoes, uh, which means that I can give her an IV, give her a plus attack stat, and she's already like, that's basically all she needed. Um, with the IV mango, putting her up to um, to uh, boosting her attack up from plus attack, uh, from plus attack IV, she's going to be at uh, 40, uh, 50, 54 attack. <laughs> Uh, I had I've been on the uh, the the character builder thing 
for Fire Emblem. But yeah, 54 attack is nothing to... Uh, there's nothing to really sneeze at. Um, obviously, again, she's, she's a lot diminished here because she doesn't have the uh, summoner support uh, buffs. But uh, you've, I mean, hopefully you've all seen her many times. Uh, what saved her was basically the Spendthrift bow. Like, there was no other bow that could compete with this. Like, it boosts your attack by 7, but it also reduces their attack by 7, which basically means that all of these stats down here get boosted by 7. Or these two stats get boosted by 7. Um, so that's good. Uh, yeah, it's just exceptionally well. The, the only problem you have, right, is that the new time gets reset, but a lot, in a lot of cases you can kind of, like, it, it, it goes off when you need it to, to keep you alive, is the, the bottom line there. Um, I went with close foil on her because, for one, uh, what's her name? Midori had the close foil on her, uh, when I fought her off for the Spencer bow, so I just figured, you know, let's just take it anyway. Um, just may as well. Um... And it's actually, I'm actually liking it excessively. Uh, the only thing you can't counter with close foil is going to be dragons, but there really aren't ever a whole lot of dragons on defense anyway, um, other than like the random Sothis here and there. But even people, you know, if even if people who have Sothis, is like no one likes to run the Sothis on their defense. So, um, yeah, I think you know it's great that it's that's like the only weakness you have, and even then you can just kind of position yourself where you snipe them, or you can just straight up tank Sothis because they don't have they'll never do significant amount of damage to you even with their adaptive damage because she doesn't have she does in fact have such a, a decent stat spread um but yeah so this is this is this is this has actually been you know phenomenal the plus five to defense and attack have been you know amazing since you're on light season you're getting the plus five res from the blessing from the air blessing so you're making up the fact you're making up the defense with the plus five defense from the close foil which is excellent, and the def the plus five defense comes in not only on just close counter targets where like melee units, but they also come in enraged. You, you fight, you get them against ranged targets as well, which you know, it's, it's great. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the attack against uh, magical targets, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I mean everything here again, you know, it's kind of fairly standard for a uh, CC Vantage user. Reposition is here so that she gets dance and then she can kind of reposition away with the uh, reposition the dancer away out of harm so and, and whatnot. Uh, noontime is here for healing just to make sure she doesn't die because a lot of times, like in terms of CC Vantage sweeping, Felicia does that. I kind of have Felicia for that and then eventually Cronia will get there as well. Uh, but in terms of like CC Vantage like brawling, uh, Loki is what I use for that. So Loki ends up fighting a lot of people a lot of times. She doesn't just kind of like one-shot the count, the retaliation. Uh, which is why I kind of like her. Um, I don't know. I just like the the fact that she can just brawl with people for a bit. Uh, it, does, it does, of course, increase your chances of losing because, you know, even taking one hit can often be like the difference between life and death. Um, and I've gotten in trouble for that a few times. But um, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, I really wouldn't have her any other way. Uh, I really do enjoy her play style and, and watching her sort of do what she does. <laughs> Uh, so the vantage is here, of course, because of that uh, same reason. Uh, it, it actually might. It actually, uh, the more I think about it, it might be kind of interesting. Maybe like if I'm going to, if I want to commit to this like more brawler esque uh, Loki, maybe running the Pegasus flight would be kind of interesting because she has decent res for it and decent speed for it, which are the two stats you need for for it to do its thing. Um, but for one, I don't have a Pegasus flight, and for two, well, yeah, I mean that's that's about it. Um, it's also important to consider that, yeah, like, even though, like I said, she does not design to, like, CC sweep people, um, or CC vantage sweep people, it does end up happening sometimes where someone will attack you and then you'll just CC vantage them back, and they'll just die, uh, without you getting hit at all. And sometimes that's helpful, like, you know, not having to brawl every single time is, uh, can be a good thing. Uh, so maybe you brawl with some people, and other people you end up just, like, you know, one-shotting them on the counter, uh, before they hit you which is good. Um, defense smoke is obviously here to increase your kill potential against other people, reduce their you know, defense by seven. It's kind of um, straightforward there. Uh, the IO shield is basically here because, um, yeah, because people, you end up fighting against a lot of people um, with bows sometimes. Uh, but if you, if you, if any of you saw my other video, you'd know um, that to a large degree, I'm, I'm I'm really starting to consider maybe removing the IO shield from her because uh, for the main reason that uh, she doesn't, I don't run into enough bows 
to the point where I use it. I mean, there's been several seasons, I, at least, where I just I go and there's no bow users on the enemy team. Um, you'll find the odd Bernadetta. The problem is, obviously, you really do need that. Like, if you do run into a Bern Bernadetta, then you're basically just dead, and and you know you lost before the the, the match even started. Um, now you could just run around like escape laddering those all the time, but you know I really rather prefer not to do that. Um, but eventually, I think I'm going to replace this with something, um, and then have when Norn like when I say eventually, I mean uh, eventually when Norn uh, gets to the plus ten and she can stand on her own. Right now, she's a little weak. Um, but yeah, so whenever Norn gets to the point where she can stand on her own, basically I'll have Norn for that reason. So if if Boki will still be my main, um, my main, you know, main uh, CC vantage unit uh, for light season. But if I ever like now that I'm running her on off of IO shield, if I'm ever running into a team that has the um, the bow on their side, well then I can just swap, uh, you know, choose that Norn team and then not have that be a big deal. Uh, and then that way, um, Boki ends up being a lot more powerful than than originally than she was originally. Um, cause right now that's, that's a, that's a pretty decently big, um, thing to be losing out on the IO shield just because you have that bow weakness. Uh, but as soon as like you can put something else there, she's going to like, her power will increase quite a bit. Um, and basically it'll, it'll mean she has no downside, right? Cause she's only going into situations that the bow weakness doesn't exist. <laughs> so for all intents and purposes, the bow weakness does not exist for her. Um, and that, that, that can be kind of scary, uh, to, to, to see. Um, but yeah, so, um, like I said, flyers are my main thing, so I really do enjoy flyers a lot, and, uh, anytime I can kind of resolve this issue of, of the IO shield and the bow weakness is, is always a good thing. Um, let's point out here, I guess. Uh, that's about it, really. Again, she doesn't have anything as flashy or as, as strong as, as Broadleaf Fan, although Spendthrift Bow does make a pretty good argument for that. Um... Yeah, she's just she's just very solid, is what she is. She's a good uh, foundation to build a team around. Um, and speaking of team, let's go take a look at what's going on over there. Also, again, I want to point out here, it's, like I said, you always want to consider your units and what season they'll do best in. Uh, I chose her because, for one, she's got decent speed and pretty decent bulk. So the fact that you get speed from Peony and the fact that you get res from uh, air is pretty good because then now the defense gets patched up by this. Um, and overall your stats are all pretty solid. Uh, for those of you, I guess, who saw my summoning video on the CYL4, you'd know that I do have the Claude. I have not, obviously you can see here, I have not fought it off his, uh, attack speed rain. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. Um, I am, I, something does seem kind of interesting to me. Uh, the idea of combining her with a, uh, so... Putting, giving her, um, since I'm taking this off, maybe giving her Heavy Blade here, uh, and then putting Attack Speed Rain here, right? Uh, mainly because Heavy Blade checks, like, she she doesn't have a high attack stat, right? She only has like 50. She's barely hitting 50 off the uh, Summoner Support. Um, and even with Summoner Support and with the, with the uh, what's it called? The... The IV, the attack IV, she's still not, she still doesn't have a high attack stat. It's only 54. So why run the heavy blade? The heavy blade also takes into consideration, um, <clears throat> uh, boosts to it, non visible boosts to attack, uh, and reductions to attack as well, non visible. So what, what you can see where I'm going with there is that. While she doesn't have a lot of attack in terms of like she's monstrously, she's gonna hit people for like serious damage, like with these huge hits. She has high attack when considering the idea when you compare her attack to other people's attack, right? Spendthrift Bow gives you a 14 attack point swing over their attack. So for her to get heavy heavy blade off just off the Spendthrift Bow, she's at 54, like I said. Uh, Plus 54 plus 14 gets her to be, um, what, 54, 64, 68. She basically has a 68 attack stat, which not a lot of people have uh, can really match up to um, to, uh, to to fight off her heavy blade, which, you know, that's that's why I just want, like, 
she has like a huge attack stat compared to other people's attack stat not maybe not so much for kill confirm a lot of the time but just like in comparison that i really do want to make use of that but the point is basically is that that's not considering the plus five from this and then the plus the minus four to their attack stat from the attack defense rain so like i said they're at 78 78 plus the dropping them by four basically puts me up to 82 plus the five from here gets me up to um 87 someone has to like reach 88 attack to be like with buffs and uh non-visible visible and non-visible buffs they have to reach 82 attack so that my heavy blade does not um doesn't activate right so that's that's kind of why i wanted to that's kind of why i was thinking about that um but it's important to realize like i said that's 82 attack compared to their attack not 82 attack going straight to their defense stat to hit them with it um like so like i said she has high attack compared to people's attack but she doesn't have that high attack compared to their to their uh their defense in terms of hitting them really hard but yeah so like i said um heavy blade is something i, I kind of want to think about um uh, maybe running on her looks like it could be kind of fun maybe uh maybe take off the noon time or something um maybe keep the noon time i don't know maybe run something like a, a a glimmer or a moonbow and then just uh worry about hitting them and uh and having that charge that special charged a lot faster but i don't know who knows um it's it's just something to consider it's something i've been thinking about considering again like i said how how monstrous her attack stat is compared to other people's um but yeah so there's not a whole lot more uh you know bulky is, is bulky she sees it a lot simpler than um looking at felicia and the team built around her um oh one of the other things i guess i, I forgot to mention that i want to kind of point out a little bit here felicia's combined stats are actually very low so she has 46 and 40 47 and 46 right her stats are so much higher than hers that she can soak up the bright shrine which is pretty cool uh this red stat th these stats gets you to 74 uh what is this 64 71 70 right so her, her defensive stats are kind of like i need to figure out how to fix that because her defensive stats are a little high uh and everybody else's are so low but yeah i mean that, that'll come with time i'll have to figure out what to do about that um i do need to make up a, a four point difference here um but yeah so like in terms of bright shrines though like you don't have to worry about it because her stats are her stats are so low uh comparison uh her res stat is unfortunately a little bit high so she does get hit by the she does get hit by the double chill so basically what that means is, is both Tessus and felicia are going to get hit by one chill uh but in terms of like a speed chill it's, it's not going to I oh, know it is still gonna hit her, just a speed chill. But in terms of like an attack chill, I don't have to worry about that as much, which is the, the main thing. Um, because her speed, like again, she's more, she's a lot better at one shotting people back on the counter rather than like doubling people. Which the speed is good. You want to have a decent speed, but like it's not like you know, like I said, it's not the end of the world. And that's kind of what's going on here with uh, Boki as well. Um, she has she has good stats for CC vantaging people, but they're not so good that you get hit by bright shrines and dark shrines. So she soaks up dark shrines. Um, she soaks up, she soaks up uh, bright uh, no, she soaks up dark shrines and then she soaks up uh, bright shrines. Um, but then on top of the fact that like because I have a dancer, it clears the buffs a bit essentially by moving a second time. Uh, it's not so big a deal. Uh, so let's talk about air, I guess. Uh, Air is kind of like my Altina. She's just kind of like slightly good, you know. Like she's not the she's not the best, but she's also not the worst. She'll she's like she, she's she's useful. She'll do something. Um, is the bottom line with her is, is she'll do something. Sometimes you know there's certain dragons like maybe like she, she'll fight Celtuses here and there. You know she'll she'll do pretty decent against them. Uh, Life and death, of course, is like I said, is just to get her um, to soak the bright shrines and the chills. Uh, this obviously is is good on her, is decent on her. I mean, it's not much else you're gonna put on her really. Um, again, it helps you fight dragons, which is pretty good. Uh, sparkling boost is here to help heal um, Boki, basically. It's the main reason, um, and that's about it. I mean, she doesn't have a whole lot going for her. Um, yeah, she's she's fun to use. I like air. I've always liked air. Um, that's why you can see I have uh, slightly more merges on her. Um, still missing the plus ten, of course. 
Um, I really wish that uh, her New Year's version, the one that actually holds Tamari, was good enough to be my uh, Tamari user on uh, either you know either either season on one of the on one of these seasons. Uh, but it is what it is. It's all right. So here's my peony. Um, fairly standard. I haven't really changed anything. Um, she just has the chill speed and then the wings of mercy. That's about it. Uh, I do have a second peony. One of these teams over here has a second peony, um, which actually has been pretty phenomenal. I actually enjoy running like on light season. What's awesome about light season is that you can run the three mythics and gain the stats, which you know boosts her speed stat because running two two peonies gets you um, plus eight speed, which is insane. But not only are you getting the plus eight speed, you're also getting two dancers, um, which that that's phenomenal. Like if, if you have if you haven't played on light season with two peonies, um, I recommend it. Like go check that out. Like having two dancers is insane. Like I, I finally I get to feel kind of to some degree what leaf players feel like running around just PVEing everybody. Um, but yeah, I don't always use that team. I think as some as some of you might have seen, it's not always like oh I'm just always gonna do double dancers. It's not always as useful. Uh, but it, when it when it is useful, man, is it useful. Um, but yeah, so you know that's what that's what her. Another one of my favorite investments of all time, which isn't like, again, it's not caveated by like, oh, you know, she's, she's all right, but, uh, you know, I chose her because of X reason. No, no, no. She's just flat out a very good investment. I think for anybody uh, playing this game. Uh, well, she, she was a while ago. Right now she's, she's still very useful, but again, there, there's, there's, there's options that compete with her where when she was around, when she first came out, when we, when we all basically first rushed to uh, plus 10 her. Uh, she was she was excessively oppressive. Like she's the she's the main reason uh, you don't see tactics or uh, just visible buffs on defense, or you shouldn't be seeing visible buffs on defense. A lot of people uh, still sort of underestimate uh, how powerful that stuff is, uh, how how powerful the, the the panic stuff is. So they they just kind of like ah I'll just leave these on here, or they don't really consider it. Um, but yeah, like uh, like I said, Aversa, one of my favorite investments uh, ever. I ever made on here um just because for one it's, it's an investment that i enjoyed making as well as it being you know the apex in terms of like competitive viability um so yeah that's, that's pretty cool uh before i get into it i guess i mean I'll, I'll point out a few like the reason why she's kind of not as good anymore is because for one iago is out there uh while i'm not gonna say he's better i do think there are things about him that are better the thing with Aversa is you can avoid her entirely by just not having your units touching each other, um, which is good because when you're going on Aether Raid's offense, I mean, a lot of times you do really want them to have to be like close to each other. Uh, your enemy, you know, on defense, a lot of times you want your enemy, your, your units to be touching each other or like, you know, adjacent to each other. On offense, you don't really care, right? Like you're doing whatever you're doing. You're just minding your own business and you never fight Aversa's on defense anyway. So she's just a monster for when you're taking out, when you're taking apart enemy, um, enemy, whatever, you know, enemy setups, right? Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to point out was like the idea that she's only really useful on player, you know, player controlled stuff um, because, you know, you can just easily avoid her when she's on the enemy team and you're playing against her. Uh, you just, you know, oh, just get the very vital units not to be touching each other, and then, you know, you're, you're off to the races in that sense. Um, but yeah, so, like, the other person who competes with her is going to be Iago, and wh why the reason I, I really do believe that he competes with her to a large degree is that Iago can be pretty interesting on a defense setup, um, where Aversa is a lot less interesting. The reason I think that is because, like I said, with Aversa, she only does her... her The thing that she does, she does very well, but it only applies on one condition and that's as long as they're touching each other if you have a unit that's not touching anyone else which again it's not you know that happens a lot on on aether raids you're just not going to have your your main unit touching anybody so it doesn't really matter um but so as long as they're not touching each other you can just avoid everything she does outright um the thing about iago is that he has different effects depending on the turn so things alternate I'm not gonna sit here and tell you like, oh, suddenly he's broken because you can't you can't uh, work you can't play around him or you know it's it's or anything like that. I'm not really saying that. It's 
he's some you can play around him i think we, we've all faced a few people with their iagos on on defense here and there uh, every so often um but he you can play again you can play around him that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that there's a little more thought that it takes to be playing around him you need to be like okay what turn is it okay what kind of debuffs am i gonna have on what kind of you know what position do i have am i gonna have him why you know I need these two adjacent right now. Next turn, I need them not adjacent. You know what's going on? The more layers of thought you put on top of something that you have to think through, the more chances you have of messing something up. Um, but like I said, when we're talking about like the highest tiers of Aether Raids here, people aren't going to mess up that often. But it's, it's something to consider. It's the idea that you're increasing the probability of mistakes by increasing uh, the layers of, of, of strategy they have to get around. Um, but yeah, that's why, like, I don't think Iago necessarily makes her, uh, irrelevant or, or is in somehow, in some way, like, quantifiably or definitively better. I'm not saying that, but, uh, certainly Iago is sort of, like, something to consider in terms of, he does things a little differently and, and something, and he does things that might, you know, be more useful in certain cases. Um, uh, but yeah, so... The other person, uh, obviously, I want to point out is going to be the Tethys, or basically a lot of people who can run the Sudden Panic and, um, you know, a lot of other stuff. Um, but the Tethys in particular is a very good um, alternative because, as you can see here, so she has she has minus three to everything, right? And then she has the Panic, which is which is pretty good. The thing about, aver the thing about uh, that is that the minus three gets overlapped by other things, whereas... Let's say you can just, instead of having the minus three everything, you can kind of put some of those stats into, you know, like a minus five, you know, from the Tethys, from Tethys' uh, Tamari dagger or just the Tamari dagger in general. Um, so it's something to consider, um, you know, what you want to go for. Um, in terms of, actually, but in terms of like a unit that can, again, like, she's also facing competition from things like that, like, not, not necessarily just Tethys, but but other units that can fulfill a similar role to Tethys, is because Tethys not only brings the panic, which is basically everything that Aversa does, but she also brings uh, the, the, uh, the, like I said, the Tamari, as well as the Dance, which is a very valuable thing in Aether Raids. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of why um, Tethys maybe isn't going to be as popular as she once was. Um, and not to mention, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of people who are more privy, who have been privy to Tethys in the past, you know, as, as she's been out for longer, uh, they've, you know, they decided, you know, it's the reason you don't see so many visible buffs on defense every single time anymore. Um, where before her, it was kind of like, they were, they were very, they are very common. Um, but yeah, so I guess the, the build on her is not, nothing too amazing. I mean, just her, her thing. She has smite because smite's useful. Uh, for movement, just getting you know further positioning. Uh, Moonbow is here just because I just gave her Moonbow. I don't know, just not really a whole lot of anything else to really put on her. I guess you could keep uh, the Dragon Fang or Dragon. I think it's Dragon Fang. She has on, which is pretty good. Uh, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to point out. Iago also has decent um, stats for just fighting people. Like Aversa, you know, she'll get some hits off on like a, a you know green tank sometimes, but a lot of times she isn't really good for fighting. Iago can be pretty good for fighting. He's got like 56 attack at max investment or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's just something to consider. Is like Iago can actually fight with people, do uh, be helpful in certain ways, uh, where Versa is kind of lacking in that regard. Um, but yeah, if, uh, again, with the IV mangoes, I'm probably going to just give her the uh, HP boost, and then she'll be... E it'll be easier to hit the uh, that. Unfortunately, I, I forgot who I fought it off for this, but I, I had to give her this just because I wanted to use her in uh, to score a little bit better in arena. Because I do do like mind you guys, I do do I do do arena. I just I've never been in tier twenty. I've only been in eighteen and nineteen. Um, I just kind of hang around there just because I don't have very good investments for to to really reach up to the tier twenty, and I really don't want to play in the tier twenty. Like it's already annoying having to do the tier eighteen and nineteen every single week anyway. Uh, but yeah, just kind of make this easier to stay in tier nineteen. Uh, I used to use her. Uh, and it gives her plus 5 HP, which is like, okay, well, it's just a, a pl an HP plus 5, but better. So, just went with that. Um, defense res link. This is the only problem I have with her right now, is that she does not have the attack defense link, which is what's going to be a lot better for her. Because uh, she, she'll give out a plus 6 attack and defense, uh, and Peony gives out a plus 7 res. So, right now, this res just overlaps the, the res on this, but... 
I gave her this before she ever came out, so that's kind of why that's there. Uh, I've just been kind of lazy to boost up um, a Mordecai and give her the um, attack defense link. But yeah, that's really what she should have. Uh, Goat Flyers, of course, is just on here um, so that she can help out uh, Boki. Like if she's she's close enough, she can give Boki some some stats. And then obviously the plus five to the seal for the extra HP here. Um, but yeah, so that's a Versa. Um, kind of straightforward. You see a lot of her uh, in a lot of places. Again, one of my favorite units. Um, happily invested into her. Um, and you know, like I said, you can't go, you can't really go wrong. It's 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 a good unit. It's a good unit every account should have. Not to mention she's also a uh, GHB. Uh, yeah, she's also a GHB unit. Um, so, you know, it, it's easier to get copies of her. Uh, I actually have two copies extra, I think, from the, like, the third rerun or something that she had. Um, uh, so she's not here every week, so I, I mean, I probably won't go over her, just, you know, it's a basic Fjorm. Um, okay, so she has this right now because uh, I'm still experimenting with her on the defense team. Uh, but normally this would all be lights, of course. So let's kind of look at what she, what she has here. So this is kind of what I was talking about. As you can see here... Um, sometimes you don't always want the panic. So sometimes I don't always go for the Aversa. Sometimes I'm just like, okay, let's just reduce their attack and def or their attack and speed by six because for one, they don't have any um, visible buffs on them, so the panic is useless, and all I'm getting is a minus three to all stats. Uh, so if I'm just getting a minus three to all stats, which is a minus twelve stat total reduction, uh, maybe I can focus that a little, a little more uh, using uh, Yoon here, uh, Yoon's whispers here with Micaiah where she can reduce um, their attack and speed by six, which is still a minus six, uh, minus 12 reduction, stat total reduction, uh, but it's more concentrated in their offensive stats, which basically means you have more survivability. Uh, and sometimes this is useful. Sometimes you just need to like sit here and tank. Uh, and sometimes you need to like smite up and then go out there and sniper unit and then tank up there, right? So it just depends on what's going on, what you need, you know. I haven't been using her recently ever since I built her. For, ever since I started messing around with my defense team, I haven't used her at all because, again, the, the, I just left the blessing on her. Um, but back, but, but she was very useful. Not not only that, right, but it's also going to be useful to have the dual effectiveness. Um, sometimes you find tanks and uh, it's like, you know, you don't really want to fight them. Um, so having, having Micaiah here be dual effective is also very useful. Uh, and there's another unit I use... Uh, aside from her now, which is the reason why I don't um, I don't miss her as much. Um, but the res bond for here, um, the ground orders was for whatever, and then this is for whatever. Uh, she the other thing she's also used for for is just face tanking Ophelia's and um, Reinhardt's, which, funnily enough, I'm I'm pretty happy to see that Reinhardt's not really um, not around very much anymore. But yeah, so she could basically. Well, I'm not necessarily happy, just like, it's interesting to see that he's not as common as he once was. Because he used to be, like, all over the place. You, you couldn't stop people from running into uh, Reinhardt. Um, but anyway, so, you've got here that... Let's see what's going on here. You've got here that uh, she's got a uh, pretty good res stat, plus the four you get from... The five you get from uh, from air gets you to 47, which is, you know, basically kind of the, the, the thing with... Um, she basically serves a similar purpose to what Tamari does, but again not as useful tethys just has so much packed into her uh that's not even funny oh but yeah so here's i mean that's that um like i said having her uh just face tank ophelia sometimes or uh what's her name what's the name reinhardt's is is it's just fun to watch uh the other the, the one of the funny things is though these days is that a lot of people are pairing ophelia's with lysithia's which i find kind of interesting um, because that, that basically solves the problem of Micaiah just sitting there and tanking everything, which is pretty cool. Um, it's it's good to see little shifts like that um, on offense. I still think the uh, like Ophelia, Lysithia type of units and teams that people set up are like excessively boring and um, artistically created, or I guess creatively um, creatively bankrupt in a lot of ways. But it's hard to deny that it's like someone didn't put work into that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's decent. It's interesting to see. Um, sometimes I just, it, it's always annoying when you're running into it, like, you know, seven times a season or something like that. But, uh, yeah, so this is my Micaiah. Uh, finally got the plus one. Unfortunately, I think both of them had a plus speed boon, which is stupid. Uh, you really want like a plus attack or a plus res. Um, probably plus attack just to get more out of the, uh, effectiveness, effective damage. Uh, so that's, so, so that's one team is here having the Aversa. 
The other team is here having her for her debuffs. Uh, <clears throat> another team recently is um, now having her here, uh, which I've been using a lot more because for one, as you can see, she's got uh, the same uh, effectiveness against calves and tanks, so she serves that purpose. Um, but also, she, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? She has the duo skill, which is just excessively dumb. Yeah. Additional damage. It doesn't stack onto your attack. It deals additional damage, basically true damage. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to say. Like, she just, this duo skill basically wins you a lot of maps on its own. You just sit there, activate it, drop their defense and res by seven, um, and then proceed to basically one-shot everybody as they fight against you. Um, well, not, not necessarily. It's not that bad. You don't know. They don't. They don't always get like one shot against you because you're only dropping them by uh, fourteen. Um, but it's it's. I mean, it's still very powerful, um, especially for your CC vantage unit strategies. Um, and that's not all. Like she also like she can face like she's not gonna be as good at tanking like um, a Reinhardt or an Ophelia because for one she's not like countering their color, but she's also she does have a decently high res stat plus the attack res. Uh, push here and the oath and the uh, stance uh, So she does a decent job um, Yeah, it's not much else I can add, ask, uh, uh, add to that um, Like I said, it, it's more the issue That she can't tank all of them. So before it used to be just like an Ophelia You could just sit there and tank her or like a Reinhardt You could just get him out of position and come tank him but for one, there's not a whole lot of Reinhardts for that reason as much anymore, and there's not a whole lot of um, Ophelias that are by themselves. So Ophelia is oftentimes paired with the Lysithia, and it's hard to tank both of them. Like you, you tank an Ophelia, it's not that big a deal, but the the Lysithia is, is another thing entirely. Um, not to mention a lot, all these right here, uh, these two plus this are all non-visible stats. So the original Ophelia uh, bomb she drops isn't going to be affected by this, so you're taking full damage on that. Whatever full damage you would have taken anyway. Uh, it's just a follow-up and the fighting against her that's not that big a deal. Um, you do get this though, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, the dominance effect is just very powerful. I'm glad I summoned, I'm glad I'm, uh, I'm glad I summoned on her. Um, she's a very good unit. Uh, I was actually, one of those things where I was actually thinking about personally, like running maybe uh, in the future. Like if I, had, if I ever had money, right? It's always funny to like look at you know what what what's going on um but if, if i ever had money like it'd be kind of funny to see a um like a cc vantage makaya and then have her like on uh astra season where you can patch up her defense a little bit uh and then just run around dominance affecting everybody and like just demolishing them like yeah it'd be funny to see how how that goes how that ended up going um but yeah so that's that that's the, that's the other team um this team here is kind of this one's kind of this one kind of changes out depending on what's going on. Um, this 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 uh, during this light season, this last this past light season, uh, I saw that I, I noticed that obviously uh, water was in season. It's like oh well, let me just throw in uh, uh, Nazura in there, and it was actually pretty good because Nazura gives you again that one the plus one movement and like just six to all stats, um, or or because since Peony's there, you get seven all stats. Um, it was very, it was pretty fun. Uh, you, you know, you hit people really hard. You're, you're very tanky. All the like seven to everything is no joke. Um, but yeah, so that's so that's that. That's what was up with that one. Uh, and then this one is the last one. It's the uh, two peonies. So there's that. And yes, I have been running peony with no skills on <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Uh, I don't know. Like it's obviously you can just put on like activate that one and then give her like that. Give her that pretty easily and then give her something here. Um, I don't know. I just I don't know what to put on her like. All these other units are already taking care of everything, basically. I mean, I could put on... Oh, well, actually, you know what? I could put on a... Um, a goad... F or, no, what is it? The... The plus six attack speed flyers thing. I could probably put that on her. Um, but, yeah. So, there's not a whole lot more uh, in terms of, like, talking about these units. Uh, I guess, past investments. Uh, I was going to make add on to this video uh talking about some like future investments but i guess i'll probably make that its own video because this one's already like an hour and a half long um but yeah so i guess uh the title will be a change to um current like current investments or something like that just talking about you know the units i put into this game and and what you know so you guys can all see because like i said 
I, I, have, I haven't talked about them before. You guys, you see me use them on 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 offense, but I've never like had a video explaining them. Um, I don't know. I feel like just talking about them anyway. Yeah, I'll just go into it anyway. Um, so let's talk about real quick some of the some of the units I, I plan on making to plus ten. Um, Echidna. I have always needed a green axe unit. I have never had a single green axe unit uh, in this game for for max investment and use utility purposes. Um, that's kind of a lie because I do have uh, Camilla, and I'm working on her. So these are you. You could you would be you could be mistaken for thinking. Oh, I have a lot of green. I must be just investing in a bunch of green axe units for some reason. Uh, but no, these are actually only for that flyer ball. Oh man, that's a spoiler, I guess. But uh, yeah, you can see here. I actually, I'm, I guess I'm just kind of sticking with the um, fortress res defense. But anyway, um, yeah, like I don't have any other. I don't have any really good um, green axe wielders like at all. Uh, like I didn't go for flame emperor because obviously flame emperor is kind of boring. Um, but there, there just hasn't been any like green axe units that I really wanted to uh, to have. Uh, be part of my my box and invest into a plus 10 uh, But echidna is like the first one. I, I, I saw her. She's kind of new. She's got good BST uh, It's her like a lot of people look at it between her and Ross kind of very similar But the difference is that she has a lot more um, Speed for the lack of a little more uh, bulkiness. I think Ross maybe has more res or something like that. I'm not entirely sure um, But yeah, so I went with the speed um, ultimately, I think it's gonna be the, be the better way to go though because Let's take a look at what she has now and what I want to have on her eventually. Um, so this is one of what was the catalyst. I mean, this and the uh, temporary ephemera from last week were both the catalysts for me to like. All right, let's just let's get this rolling. Let's uh, let's start investing. Let's start going. Because um, I, I I didn't have any echidnas, funnily enough. Um, but as I was summoning, I I think I forgot where I got an echidna. Oh no, I had an echidna from somewhere. I summoned a while ago, and then I got another echidna. Out of the uh, temporary ephemera shop, the the red the red paper shop, um, and then I just kind of uh, you know foddered her in here in here, and now she's at a plus one. So a decent start, I think, to to this. Eventually, you want to get to plus ten. Uh, she doesn't have any flowers because, like I said, I'm out of flowers too. But eventually, you want like just max her out. Um, so yeah, I was just like, well, that on top of the fact that we also got deck swabber from the past uh, tempest trials, which is basically a lull attack defense. Five, um, so that's pretty insane. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's not a whole lot else to uh, to really go on about. Like this this right here is insanity. Like it gives her five defense and res while making them physically ta uh, physically vulnerable to your attacks, all non visibly as well. Um, of course, one of the things that is kind of making this a little bit of a moot point. Um, is how oppressively powerful it's gonna look like the the mask. What, what the fuck is his name? I forgot what his name was. Is that guy the new guy? He got to refine. He's got like a bunch of uh, effects stacked. It's like he's got a mask on. Anyway, that guy looks very strong. That guy looks like he'd be like if you want to invest in a in a good green axe unit, like a, an infantry axe unit. I mean, I'd probably go for that guy honestly. Um, but yeah, like this axe, we got this axe, and I was like, well, let's get in there because originally it was huge fan. Uh, which is a pretty good axe as well, but uh, I don't think it has anything on this uh, deck swabber. Like this deck swabber is ridiculous. Plus, they they don't have any visible buffs either. They're not gonna have any visible buffs either, um, which is just amazing. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's consider here to to some degree. Um, this will probably be like reposition or something. It doesn't really matter. Uh, here we're probably I'm gonna switch this out for noon time, but she doesn't have a whole lot of uh, SP right now. Uh, so I just kind of left it there while I'm just grinding stuff out with her, boosting her HM and her uh, SP farming here. Um, so she just has soul, but eventually this will probably be noontime, or, uh, yeah, probably just noontime, really. I mean, I might have to put something offensive just so that she doesn't, like, she can kill people, but, uh, the idea is to just make her super tanky. Um, uh, disencounter, I had a, uh, I gave her a disencounter from the Hector we got from the Resplendent version of him. Um, so that's I just had that lying around and no one else to use it on um, the only other person I would I need a disencounter for would be uh, Itsuki, but I'm not building Itsuki currently and I probably won't build him for a very long time um, He's only at a plus one from the two temper styles ones we got but other than that 
Um, yeah, he's the only other person who would really use a distant counter. I don't have a whole lot of use for distant counter right now. I actually have another a second extra one, but uh, yeah, I don't have enough. Like, there's there's no one who can really use it right now. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got distant counter here. Uh, it's pretty one of the early things to give her. Um, so I guess the idea is what to give her later. So actually, yeah, I'll probably just stop it here. Um, I'll set up these these like future investment things video where I talk about them using the uh, unit. Uh, the unit builder thing on, on online and I'll show you what they should look like at the end because right now it's kind of hard to visualize and I have a lot of their stats memorized but not 100% so you know may as well just have that up there have you guys look at it uh, but just know um, Echidna some, someone I'm going to be working on as I start getting more I mean of course I need to summon more so that's, that's kind of the biggest um, blocker but I, like that's why it's always good to have like multiple sources of where your investments are coming from because, uh, sure, Heroic Grails, the Grail units, right, are like, you know, they're there. You don't have to summon, you don't have to worry about whatever, they're free to play. Uh, but having too many projects really, like, makes it hard uh, to go through and, and do that. Like, right now I'm doing Minerva, right? So where am I going to get more Grails to plus 10 another unit? So it's good to have someone to, to have merge or to have a, a sort of a project going on when you're summoning for other stuff, right? So while I'm summoning... Um, hopefully I can get some more uh, echidnas and then just build her up over time um, and have a pretty good axe unit I think um, overall uh, I really do like the speed on her um, over anything else and like I like I mentioned last time the speed res solo thing here is, is ridiculous like it patches up her res quite a bit so she's at 30 and 33 right now uh, for defense and res uh, she's at 46 speed um, and not only that, but like it's good on her because she also wants to be solo from this um, She can't be adjacent for this to be active uh, So yeah, so I think you know, like I said this this thing is actually more useful in a lot more units than I originally had, uh, Thought just be, like my first reaction was oh great. Uh, they gave us like one of the weaker Solo skills because they didn't want to give us like attack speed solo or, or you know Yeah, basically that's the, the one we all want right? We all just wanted attack speed uh, more damage more damage um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, once you get past that initial like, oh, I can't believe we didn't get the, you know, uh, obviously not, not, not like disappointment. We, I mean, I don't think anybody was expecting the attack speed one, um, but like the, 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 the bitterness of like, yeah, we're never going to get the attack speed one kind of wears off. It's like, yeah, this speed res solo one is actually uh, pretty exceptional. Um, but yeah, um, I eventually, I'm not sure what uh, asset I want to give her. Uh, I think it's probably going to be speed, but I'll probably show it in the in the in the thing which one it is. But it's going to be different between it's going to be either speed or, or attack. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look at what she's supposed to look like at the end uh, once I'm all done with her. But yeah, um, yeah, I guess that'll be it. Uh, I was going to go into the units, but yeah, it does make more sense to have those uh, builds already set up somewhere so you guys can see them instead of sitting here going, "I'm going to invest in her. Uh, trust me, bro, she's going to look really good at the end of it." Um, yeah, so that'll be that uh, for those of you. Uh, who don't know uh, Dex Wobber? That's uh, that's a very good um, axe. Uh, we've actually it's kind of funny like we've gotten actually some very good axes recently. Uh, that with Dex Wobber and um, what was the other one? Huge fan have been very good. Um, it was a it was a tough decision to, to decide which one to go with, but the fact that like you can be the fact that uh, Dex Wobber doesn't need anything like Huge Fan needs you to be buffed for it to work, uh, but the fact that uh, Dex Wobber doesn't need anything other than you being in a solo is, is uh, to me it's a lot more applicable and a lot better now in arena if you're using it for arena which you know I want to use her for arena eventually um, if you want to use her in arena it's important to realize that uh, that that's not such a big deal uh, trying to get that boost that that, that um, yeah that boost on your like in a plus six or whatever that bonus on your unit it's not that hard that visible buff on your unit it's not that hard in an arena to like play with that and 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 be safe with that where it is on like um aether age where like they have the uh the panic manner and all that kind of stuff uh, so it's a lot safer a lot more easy to manage and i think in that's in that scenario alone it does make the huge fan a lot more enticing um but yeah i don't know i mean i like the i like everything i like the lull aspect of the deck swabber like they don't get any buffs and they get dropped by five on attack and defense. It's 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 hard for me to pass up for just like what some special some you know special charging and like a plus four attack defense. Um, but I will point out though that with that one it does make her it does make your unit kind of like 
you can make a, a budget bike essentially right you can make a budget bike using echidna you run with that um the huge fan just make sure he's got a buff on her all the time um and uh i don't know give her like a uh what's it called aether and maybe like a what's like some sort of um some sort of damage reduction a thing on the on the b slot so like a a close call or a uh, or a spurn even um and then there you go you kind of have like a little weird little budget ike uh bike which you know i guess it's like why wouldn't you just make a regular bike if you were going to do that anyway um but yeah uh yeah that'll be it for today i think maybe tomorrow or the day after i'll, I'll put up the other video I'm talking about like future investments and what, what things i would love to build and uh you know what i think you guys should all keep an eye out um I've been wondering about making like videos on the new on new banners as they come out, um, but unfortunately, I'm kind of boring when it comes to this stuff. I'm not very much of a hype monger. Like, as for any of you who've seen my summoning videos, I'm not like super hyped to be in there or, or you know to, to be pulling anything. I'm just kind of like, oh yeah, here it is. Um, so a lot of these videos that I make on new units that are going to come out, or most of the time, they're going to be kind of boring. They're just going to be like they're usually just going to be like, oh, you know, just save. Honestly. Um, there's only a few instances where going all in or, or being super excited about things um, are really is really worth it. Um, but a lot of like the banners that have come out, like even like I said, even Claude came out and he had attack attack speed rain, and that was kind of like iffy even uh, talking about that. Um, so I don't know. There's just a lot like my channel isn't very like we're not. I don't really enjoy summoning in this game too much. So that I guess that kind of shows in terms of like what I produce or I yeah, produce right quote produce. Um, but a lot of the content I do is not like, you know, I'm not very hype when it comes to a lot of this stuff. It's more like, it's kind of like chess, right? It's like we're playing a, a, a chess game where they can nickel and dime us, right? Is it, is it as advanced as chess? No, obviously not. It's, it's, it's advanced in a different kind of way. Uh, it's got a lot of other things going on, but it's that same thing, right? It's like, it's kind of hard to like, imagine if they made a chess where they updated it with a new piece every so often. And then all the pieces were like little waifus or husbandos or something like that. Um... So you can see kind of how degenerate that would be, and, and that, that's kind of what uh, Fire Emblem is is in a lot of cases. Uh, but that core, like, quote-unquote, sophistication of how chess is kind of is what I like about Fire Emblem, and it, 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 it's sort of like, I don't know, it's probably why I'm not so, like, hyped about summoning. It's not something I really care about. I'm more centralized in the calm, sort of, like, strategic aspect of it. Um, but yeah, so, like I said, um, I don't know, depending on if anybody maybe wants that kind of stuff, I'll probably, oh, shit. Um, I'll probably make some videos sometime at some point, um, start at some point, start talking about them, just interesting units here and there. Um, if, and I'll, I guess I'll see how those videos do. And then, you know, cause obviously I got to gauge this off of like, uh, what, what I see from that kind of stuff. Ugh. I have to gauge this off of what I see from that kind of stuff. Cause I'm, no one really comments on the, any of these videos. Um, but yeah, so like I said, you know, I always like to talk about this game. I like to think about this game. Um, unfortunately, one of the things, yeah, anyway, but yeah, uh, I would like to make more videos, uh, about this game, so I probably will, uh, coming in the, coming in the future, um, just because there's not a whole lot to talk about when you're talking about fire, uh, when you're talking about, um, Epic 7, because, yeah, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a different beast, that game, but yeah, so that, that's it for today, um, Hopefully it wasn't too bad, an hour and 40 long minute video, uh, just showing off units. But uh, yeah, so uh, good luck on Aether Raids, hopefully you guys all make it to tier 27.